Welcome to the video presentation of our paper titled Semantic Segmentation of Underwater Imagery, Dataset and Benchmark. We are with the Interactive Robotics and Vision Laboratory at the Minnesota Robotics Institute of the University of Minnesota Twin Cities. In this paper, we present the first large-scale dataset for semantic segmentation of underwater imagery, in short, SWIM. Semantic segmentation is a well-studied problem in robotics and computer vision for its usefulness in many tasks including object detection and detailed scene understanding. For underwater robot vision in particular, the pixel-level detection of objects is useful for accurate scene parsing in applications such as visual tracking, surveying, and manipulation. It is also beneficial for autonomous underwater exploration by visually guided robots. However, robust underwater image segmentation is challenging mostly due to a host of underwater optical distortions that cause noisy visual data. The uniqueness of image content and object categories are also among reasons why the existing terrestrial datasets and standard models are not directly applicable in underwater robot vision. Moreover, the existing large-scale underwater datasets are tied to specific applications, such as coral reef classification and coverage estimation or fish detection and segmentation. Other datasets contain either binary annotations for salient foreground pixels or semantic labels of a few object categories such as seagrass, rocks, or sand. Due to these reasons, the learning-based semantic segmentation methodologies for underwater imagery have not been explored in depth in the literature. We attempt to address these limitations in the proposed SWIM dataset. It contains a large collection of natural underwater images and semantic annotations for important object categories. We also provide benchmark evaluations for various state-of-the-art models on this dataset. Specifically, we consider object categories for fish, reefs, aquatic plants, and wrecks or ruins, which are primary objects of interest in many underwater exploration and surveying applications. We also include pixel annotations for human divers, robots, and seafloor, which are important in human-robot cooperative applications. The images are chosen from large-scale datasets named UVP, USR248, and EUFO120, which we previously proposed for underwater image enhancement and super-resolution tasks. Please check out this link for more information. We collected these natural underwater images by numerous oceanic explorations and field trials and also from a few publicly available online resources such as YouTube and Flickr. Few samples from the dataset are shown here. There are over 1500 annotated images for training and validation and another 110 samples are provided for benchmark evaluation. As shown in this bar chart, the coral reefs, fish and seafloor are present in a large fraction of these images. We also collected data during various human robot collaborative experiments. Hence, a lot of the images include object categories such as human divers, robots, wrecks, or ruins as well. This figure further shows the density of pixel values for R, G, and B channels in the entire dataset. We now show a few use cases of the SWIM dataset. In addition to general purpose semantic segmentation, the SWIM dataset can be used to train deep visual models for pixel level detection of specific objects such as human divers or robots. This provides more fine-grained object localization than standard bounding box detections. The SWIM dataset can also be used to train semantic saliency prediction models that pay attention to specific object categories of interest, whereas the salient object detection datasets can also be used to train class agnostic models for foreground segmentation. In summary, the SWIM dataset facilitates large-scale supervised training of underwater image segmentation models for general purpose use. It contains semantic pixel annotations of important object categories such as fish, reefs, aquatic plants, wrecks or ruins, human divers, robots, and seafloor over a variety of backgrounds and water body types. The dataset and relevant information can be found by following this link. We perform a comprehensive benchmark evaluation of several state-of-the-art semantic segmentation approaches named DeepLab, PSPNet, UNet, SegNet, and FCN. As mentioned here, we tried several variants of these models based on their encoding network and input modes. In addition, we present a fully convolutional encoder-decoder model named SwimNet. It incorporates deep residual learning within a shallow unit-based architecture to provide competitive segmentation performance while ensuring a fast end-to-end -end runtime. Now let's take a closer look at the SwimNet architecture. The base model of SwimNet incorporates a three-layer residual block as the core element of its encoder. It is called RSB because its residual connection allows an optional skip layer. As shown here, each convolutional layer is followed by batch normalization and ReLU nonlinearity, and the optional skip layer is controlled via a flag during compilation. 
The end-to-end -end network architecture is shown here. Swimnet uses a total of 7 RSVs sequentially in the second and third encoder blocks and eventually extracts 256 feature maps from RGB input images. These feature maps are then exploited by three sequential decoder blocks. Each of these blocks consists of a convolutional layer that receives skip connections from its mirrored encoding layer. Then it is followed by batch normalization and a deconvolutional layer for a special upsampling. At last, the final convolutional layer generates the binary pixel levels for each object category. As evident from this figure, we attempt to combine the benefits of skip connections and residual learning into a fully convolutional and shallow network architecture for fast inference. Instead of attempting to surpass the state-of-the-art performance with denser architecture, our motive for such design is to achieve real-time inference while ensuring a competitive segmentation performance. We use TensorFlow Keras libraries to implement the training pipeline of SwimNet. The end-to-end -end learning is supervised by the standard Adam optimizer with binary cross-entropy function to evaluate the loss between predicted and ground truth pixel levels. We use the same learning pipeline for the state-of-the-art models as well, but with recommended training settings provided in their individual releases. Detailed configurations and data preparation processes can be found in the appendix section of the paper. We conduct performance evaluations for image segmentation on five major object categories – fish, reefs, human divers, wrecks or ruins, and robots. We also show performance comparison for binary saliency prediction with four object categories as shown here. For these two configurations, we evaluate and compare the performance of all models in consideration. We use two standard metrics for quantitative evaluations, named F-score and MIOU. The F-score measures region similarity of the predicted pixel labels compared to the ground truth based on precision and recall values. On the other hand, MIOU quantifies object boundary localization performance based on the mean of intersection over union measure. We also map the output of each model to RGP space for a qualitative evaluation. At first, we show the performance comparison based on the F scores. Here, the top scores for each object category are colored red and the next three best scores are colored blue. This result suggests that although there is no clear winner, unit on RGB inputs, FCN with VGG encoder and DeepLab generally perform better than other models for both semantic segmentation and saliency prediction. Besides, SegNet with ResNet encoder and PSPNet also provide competitive scores. However, their performances are slightly inconsistent over various object categories. We observe similar patterns for MIOU scores as well. Moreover, SegNet with a ResNet encoder and FCN with a VGG encoder achieve significantly better scores compared to using their vanilla CNN-based encoders. This validates the benefits of using a powerful feature extractor. On this aspect, Despite using a simple 3-layer vanilla encoder, SwimNet provides competitive performance for both region similarity and object localization. Specifically, SwimNet's scores are within 5-7% to margins of their respective top scores. The accuracy of semantic leveling and object localization of SwimNet can be further visualized in this comparison. As shown here, the SwimNet-generated segmentation masks are reasonably accurate. Although FCN with VGG encoder and DeepLab achieve much fine-grained object contours, the loss is not perceptually significant. We further demonstrate the effectiveness of swimnet generated segmentation masks for pixel-level detection of human divers and robots. As shown here, it provides more precise object localization compared to standard bounding box detectors such as DDD. Besides, the semantic knowledge can be used to generate improved saliency maps, for instance, the class agnostic saliency detectors such as ASNet only pay attention to high contrast foreground regions, whereas the SwimNet can be configured to pay attention to specific object categories in the image, which is more useful in general. Lastly, as shown in this table, SwimNet offers over 28 frames per second runtime on a single GPU, which is considerably faster than other models in comparison. Also, it is over 10 times more memory efficient than the UNET models, FCN with VGG encoder, and deep lab. These features are ideal for its use in computationally constrained systems. However, as demonstrated in the experimental results, SwimNet's computational efficiency comes at a cost of its lower performance margins. We are in the process of releasing a SwimNet model with a partial VGG16 based encoder, which overcomes some of these shortcomings. Please visit our project page for updates like this and more information about Swim and SwimNet. 
We conclude by acknowledging the support from our research sponsors. Thank you.